guys, Colin Elam again, aka the Musket Man, and I am back for another range video. Uh, finally, after these long months, it's been a while since I've had a chance to come out here and actually do a range video. And today, guys, I brought out one of the most iconic firearms of the 18th century and the 19th century, which is the Brown Bess Musket. Uh, this was used in a number of conflicts uh, in America, Mexico, used by the British, and a bunch of others as well. Uh, it saw lots of <laughs> battles and very famous ones as well. Uh, I've been wanting one for a very long time by Petter Soli. Finally had an opportunity to buy one for a fair price considering today's time, but you're getting good quality. Uh, this is a Petter Soli reproduction, which if you know anything about Petter Soli or Chiapa, Army Sport, Pieta, Uberti, the Italian reproductions are fantastic quality. They do a lot of good work, nothing wrong with it, looks great. This gun has never been fired yet. I've had it for about two months now and have finally had an opportunity to shoot it. So this is a brand new 2023 Brown Bess that is unfired. So I had some time, I thought we would come out to the range and do a range session with it. Um, today, if you recognize this uh, cartridge pouch, is the same one I used in my 1757 Spanish video, but now I've actually got a brown bass that fits this box. And what we're gonna be shooting today is uh, uh, the brown bass paper cartridge, which is a 69 caliber round ball wrapped with a brown paper and shooting about 110 grains of 2F Go-X black powder. Um, I will not be loading the true military way where you would tear it off, prime first, then load the muzzle. I'm gonna be loading directly into the muzzle and then priming with my uh, primer that I've got in my pickup. I do that just for safety reasons. I know there's a bunch of YouTubers out there that don't do it that way, but I just feel a little bit more safe doing it that way. And we're gonna be uh, shooting at 25, 50, and 75 yards just to see what kind of accuracy the Brown Best can get with the standard uh, paper cartridge. The paper cartridges that I'm using, and I would get one out, but it's kind of plugged right now, is uh, the Jefferson Arsenal, the ones that make all the paper cartridge kits. I, it's the first kit I ever got from them, and let me tell you guys, if you're into making paper cartridges for your guns, your muskets, highly recommend you go check them out. They do fantastic work. It was great. They've got videos out there on demonstrating how to do it, and that's what I'm going to be shooting today. Well, anyway, guys, I think let's just start the range video, and let's get to it. So I'm using the same target I always use so far for my range videos, just a standard silhouette paper target. Uh, I've stacked it on top of another barrel just to get a more even shot versus me trying to aim down. I like to do that with my muskets and uh, any of my guns just to give myself the benefit of the doubt. Nice big target, we're using a nice big smoothbore musket. So hopefully we can get some uh, hits and we'll be able to see where it's going. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. We're just gonna see how tight of a group we can get with these paper cartridges. And again, they're paper cartridges. It's not like patching your round ball or using tow or anything like that to get a more accurate shot. This is more of a military cartridge. And again, 25, 50, and 75 yards, we're gonna see what it can do. And uh, anyway, guys, let's load up and shoot. All right, guys, there's something I wanna talk about, and I do this in all my range videos, is guys, make sure you're wearing ear protection and eye protection. I recommend it for all firearms, but especially when you're using black powder guns and especially flintlocks. You've got that flash going on by your face. Just protect your eyes and naturally your ears because it makes a loud noise. So make sure you're doing that when you're doing muzzle loaders, muskets, and all firearms. All right, so loading up the brown bass is pretty much the same thing as the 1757 Spanish or any smooth uh, bore musket for that matter. Uh, I did mention earlier, I will not be priming first. That's just personal, I don't wanna do that. If you wanna do that, you're more than welcome to. It's just I, the years I've been shooting black powder, I just like to prime last on flintlocks. But, so anyway, you'll just pull out a cartridge, if I can get it, oh, come on now. And that's what it looks like. Very similar, but that's brown paper, Jefferson Arsenal, their kit made that. And usually what the soldier would have done is tear it off, prime with about five to 10 grains of powder, and pour the rest, but we're not gonna do that. So what you wanna do is just get it in your mouth like this. Tear it off. And sometimes it's not gonna tear properly. You might just be like I did and get some powder in your mouth. It happens. And we're just gonna pour it down the barrel. As you can see, I got some grains on me, that's okay. 
and that happens sometimes. Now, some guys like to go ahead and just load it down like this. You can if you want. I've been told that there's more accuracy loading it this way. So I'm gonna do that. As you can see, I'm loading it down and I'm gonna crumble up the paper. Next, you're gonna get out your ramrod. And as you can see, should do that. Give it a couple taps so it don't roll out or fall out. That way you're kind of compressing your powder. And as the barrel fouls up, it, it won't be as easy, but that's what they were intended to do, is that you could reload faster. As you can see right here with the lock, we're gonna put it on half cock. It's that first click, as you can hear. And this is a frizz install, which is your extra safety. And I've also got a flash guard, which was used in reenactments to keep the guy next to you from getting a powder full of face, uh, face full of powder, said that backwards. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is this little brass primer here. I'm just gonna fill up that pan. Now you don't wanna to put too much. I like to just tap it to kind of level it out and close it and you're ready to fire. You don't wanna to put too much powder in your pan because what's gonna happen is the gun might still go off, but you're gonna get a delay. So you might get a click, then a boom. You want the spark to hop through that touch hole to hit the main powder charge. You don't want it to act like a fuse. But anyway, that's how you load the brown best. Let's step back and shoot it. All right, guys, we got the brown best all loaded up. We're gonna take our first shots at 25 yards. Probably gonna be shooting about three or four rounds just to see what kind of grouping we can get. All right, guys, we'll see what happens. First shot of a brand new 2023 Brown Best. And also, I apologize for wind. I've not bought one of those mics yet, so if it's a little windy, I apologize. But anyway, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> There's one. All right, shot two. shot three. <laughs> well, let's go over there, see what we did. So as you can see, 25 yards, the brown bass had no problem taking out an individual target. Second shot, I did feel myself slightly drop down, but the ignition was really good. I aimed, I was aiming about right here. So it's pretty much hitting where I was aiming at. Now, 25 yards, even for a musket is a give me shot. So he did not survive. So that, <laughs> I was actually impressed even at 25, how good that did. And I think that was a little bit of user error, but that's not bad. Let's back up to 50 and see what the Brown Best does at that range. backed up to 50 yards and we're just going to see will the grouping open up will it stay about the same we're going to find out so i'm just going to load up again this is a lot more fun in my opinion that's funny you can say that i love shooting rifles too but it's fun to shoot these if the powder measure is already done for you it lets you take a step back in military history and again i apologize for this wind got to get a mic. You can see I just put it on the top there, just crumble up the paper, push it down with your finger. And as the barrel's getting fouled up, I can tell it's getting tighter, which is good. It, that's supposed to help you with your axi. As you can see, it's not going all the way down. 
No, this ain't like the TV show Sharp, where I'm trying to get four shots a minute. We're just out here shooting for fun. First shot, 50 yards. This is so fun. All right, shot two, 50 yards. Let's head over there, see how we did. Well guys, as you can see, 50 yards, Brown Bess has no problem taking on paper feet. Uh, this was the first shot, first two right next to each other, all kill shots. Um, I did aim higher because I felt big projectile, but I felt that I was pulling down when, on my first shot, so I did pull it up to about to the nine. Uh, the first shot, a gust of wind hit me right as I fired, so I think that's what happened here. But two right next to each other, and these are all kill shots. Now, some of you that shoot all these guns all the time going, or you just shoot guns in general, you're going, well, that's not really a tight grouping. You got to understand these guns aren't rifled. They're shooting a big projectile. The projectile in there is wrapped around paper. It's not a snipe tough, snug or tight fit. So you're basically having to build up a lot of pressure to get accuracy out of these guns. But after a certain yardage, that's when they just fired in volleys. But if you had to take on an individual target with something like this, or the Charleville or the Springfield musket or the Spanish musket, as you can see, individual target, it has no problem. It's not hole and hole accurate, but we got close. So anyway, we're gonna try and back up to 75 yards and just see what it does there. Sorry about the wind again. I know it's just need to get a mic, but apologize for that. But as you can see, 75 yards out, we're kind of on a mound that's about two foot taller than where we were at. But just to get an idea for this particular gun at 75 yards, for what most people say for individual targets, that's when it can get a little dicey. So we're going to load up, shoot three, and see what it does at 75 yards. All right, first shot, 75 yards. Let's see what we can do. It's a little windy, first time shooting it, so let's just see if we can get a hit. I heard a hit. All right. All right, shot three. I heard a hit. All right, I decided I'd take a four shot since I missed that first one. Breeze hit me right as I fired. So I'm gonna see if I can get a third shot on paper since we're already out here. All right. I heard it hit. That wind is a beast, man. 
I can't believe that. Honestly, can't. That's right here. One, two, three. Y'all saw it. My first shot went uh, to his left of him. I saw it hit the mound right as I fired. A gust of wind hit me, and that's why I missed. But I was aiming about at the nine to compensate for the wind. And one, two, three. I took that extra four shot. And I don't have big hands. I mean, that's smaller than my hand diameter. I mean, that 75 yards with the Brown Bass 69 caliber uh, round ball. And it did that good of a grouping. And I know you'll probably say, well, you had this flyer right here. Well, but I told you all the wind or something slight like that, a hang fire with these guns can throw your accuracy off that bad. But those last three shots out of four, perfect ignition, breeze didn't really hit me, and it did that kind of grouping. So the whole myth that you can't hit the broadside of a barn with one of these things, and that's with a military style paper cartridge, obviously not. That, wow, I am just impressed. You saw it here. It was tighter than the 25 yard group. So, wow, that's amazing. So yeah, I highly recommend you get out here if you got one and do this test because I'm just beyond happy right now. <laughs> All right guys, so I give you a better look here. And as you can see, the first grouping at 25 yards was a no brainer. It was very easy to do that. And uh, it was just a really a give me shot. And in the second one, uh, I went to 50 yards and I had the one flyer outside of the grouping. I had a gust of wind hit me and I think that's what caused the shot to go down. But as you can see, it's still a kill shot. So for the brown best, that's pretty good for 50 yards considering. And in the third and final grouping, which was the most impressive, I thought in my opinion, was at 75 yards. And I know I'd missed one, and that was also from user error, but when I took the fourth shot, I had three about the size of my palm, which is really, really impressive for the brown bess on an individual target at this range. So the myth that these guns can't hit the broadside of a barn, well, there you go. Well, so what are my thoughts on the brown bass? Well, I know I've been wanting one for a very long time, finally got one and had a chance to go shoot it. I had a blast shooting this gun. I have a blast shooting all my black powder guns, but just something about the brown bass with all the movies, the historical significance, I guess you could say, that's tied to it, the years it was used, the conflicts, it just took a step back in history to truly see what those soldiers went through back then on any side, really and just the style of cartridges they would have used, loading problems that could have happened with it. Uh, you know, just things like that. Uh, this was a lot of fun to shoot. Highly recommend you get yourself a Pedersoli Brown Bass. They're, you're getting your money's worth. Some say they're a little pricey, that's debatable, but you're getting your money's worth. You're not getting a piece of wood and pipe. You're getting something that's actually high quality is going to do exactly what it was designed to do lots of accessories to get for it as you can see um one the one thing i slightly don't like about it and this is it is the trigger pulls about 13 and a half pounds now some of you are going whoa like that's a lot yeah but it's not a heavy pull it's a long one so the trigger's giving then in that sweet spot it goes off which i'll take that over a solid heavy trigger pull any day and as I was shooting today, which probably had to do with some of my shots that were off, once you figure out where the gun goes off, you figure it out. And as you saw, 75 yards, military style paper cartridge, 110 grains, bullet didn't seem to drop. And it, I had a grouping the size of my palm, which is insane with something like this, with just how big it is. I mean, it doubles as a shotgun too, but I loved it. It was a great day to come out to the range. Highly recommend you get yourself one. If you're not into making paper cartridges, I highly recommend you get into it. It's basically bringing arts and crafts into the gun world, you know, for men. <laughs> uh, really, it was just great. I want to thank Jefferson Arsenal. They do not pay me to say this. I want to thank them for their kit. Go check them out. They've got kits for a variety of different guns, muskets, flintlocks, percussion cap guns, cap and ball revolvers, anything you're looking for for style of guns like this. Go check out their website. Highly recommend it. It was just 
man, I can't believe that. That just, it was a great day to come on the range. All right, guys, I wanted to give a special shout out to the Jefferson Arsenal. Uh, I purchased their kit for the Brown Best, and they offer a number of kits for all different types of muskets and uh, black powder firearms as well. So I recommend you go check out their website and go check out their products. Bunch of great high quality stuff. And uh, I just thank him for making this video possible. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of getting on the range shooting the Brown Best Musket. Remember, I'm the Musket Man. Keep your powder dry. We will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys.